Hey guys, so today we are making a Pumba cake. Why? Because Mudderwink, that's why. So let's get started. Now a couple months back, the Bake King posted a picture of him and his Pumba cake and I challenged Mariwink to recreate this cake. She challenged me right back and so this is my Pumba cake. <laughs> Let's see who makes a better Pumba cake. Let's pretend like we don't know. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Now to create this cake, I'm using a cake frame. I bought this from Germany. It's expensive and fancy. Now I'm starting off with a six inch round cake. The Bake King's Pumba cake was like huge. I'm, I'm only allowed to have one shelf in my uh, apartment size fridge. So I, it's my cake is like this big. Very little, very, very little. And I'm placing buttercream in between each layer of cake and then placing on my second round cake. And I didn't level this cake off because the hump is actually gonna help me create Pumbaa's body. Now I'm adding some more frosting and I'm actually gonna add a little bit of a support system with some cardboard here to support Pumbaa's big old head. Now to create his head, I'm using a six inch dome cake. I'm just adding some more buttercream and then topping it off with another six inch round cake. Do you see Pumbaa yet? I think, I think I see a winner. Damn, it feels good to be a game. In all honesty, I really don't know what I'm doing and I kind of panicked at this point. So I decided to give this cake a crumb coat. <laughs> I did it. I didn't even carve it, but I was like, okay, well, I don't know what to do. So let's just crumb coat it for now. <laughs> So the thing that I love about Modern Wink is her followers are really funny and they are sarcastic and they're kind of mean. <laughs> but that's totally my sense of humor. So when they comment something that's really mean, <laughs> I laugh really hard. I don't take any offense. I screenshot it and then I show it to Mari because I think it's really funny. And then she just like apologizes <laughs> for you guys. She's like, I'm so sorry. They don't mean it in a bad way. It's just like funny. I began to carve my Pumbaa shape. Using a ton of different knives, I'm just very slowly, very terrified, no confidence whatsoever. <laughs> Carving away at my cake. I bought these two Pumbaa figures on eBay, $9 each. What was I thinking? I really wanted to win. <laughs> I needed like a 3D representation of the character so I could see how much I needed to carve from the cake. This cake is expensive, you guys. I don't know. I'm not even gonna lie, I was really scared about making this cake. Everybody knows what Pumbaa looks like and if I'm screwed up just a little bit on the carving, I wouldn't be happy with this cake. But this carving process took even longer than usual. So I rounded out his body and gave him a huge belly. And then I started to work on his head. So I'm just enhancing his like huge chin. And then I started to carve in between his eyes and his nose and then started rounding down his mouth. At this point, I was really like hating Mudderwink, hating the Bake King because it was too hard <laughs> and I didn't want to do it. <laughs> but in actuality, I really do like these two creators. One thing I'm not good at is being uncomfortable and having to do this challenge put me in an uncomfortable situation and I actually learned a lot from carving this cake. So I hated you in the moment. I love you for life, all right? Now when I was carving his face, I realized that his nose needed to be taller. So I added another layer of cake and just started to carve out his nose shape. Then I added some buttercream and glued it down. Once I was happy with my Pumbaa shape, I gave this baby another crumb coat. This is the confidence crumb coat because now I kind of know what I'm doing. No, I don't. <laughs> now, have you guys seen the Little Shops of Horror cake that the baking created? This cake, man, I'm speechless. I think it's so beautiful. Also, have you guys seen this beautiful piece of art that Mari Wing created? This also left me speechless. Damn, it feels good to be a guy. Now, after I gave my Pumbaa cake a crumb coat, I added some more cake to create his legs, and I didn't know how much cake to add for his legs. So I added half of a six inch round cake. This was a mistake. 
Now slowly I just started to carve away a little bit at a time and I just ended up with this very very small piece of cake. I wasted a lot of cake, I'm sorry. Now I just repeated this process with his other leg. Now I placed this into the fridge to set up and I actually took it out a couple times just so I could emphasize different parts and different features of Pumbaa that I didn't get right the first time. Now once I was happy with it, I gave this baby a final coat of buttercream. Yup. As much time as I did spend carving this cake, I wasn't confident that it was going to look exactly like Pumbaa. So if I added fondant on top of this and I wasn't happy with it, then I would just cry. <laughs> There's no way to fix the carving once the fondant's on top. So I decided that I was just gonna cover this cake in some Pumba brown buttercream. That way if I screwed up on the carving in any way I could just shave down the buttercream in some places and add more buttercream in others. It's a really good safety net. I was supposed to do this with the Pikachu cake but then I got scared then. No fears now. We're probably gonna do this more often in the future. So I covered my entire Puma cake with some brown buttercream. At first I just gave it a rough coat and then I just started to refine all of the different lines with my offset spatula. Just making sure that I'm emphasizing his big old chin, his very chubby body. And I placed this back into the fridge to chill for probably about 30 minutes. And then I placed on a glove and using a little bit of water, I just started to smoothen out all of the buttercream. Now the outer buttercream actually got a lot darker. I think the water draws out the food coloring from the buttercream, which is why the top coat is darker. You know, when I do this in the future, I think I'm just going to do all of this in just plain white buttercream. And once it's all carved and smoothened out properly, then I'll add like the colored coat of buttercream. Now once this was all smoothened out, I started to apply Mo Buttercream. This is kind of like a fix-it buttercream. And to create some of his features on his face, I actually created some piles of buttercream so I could get his eyes, his smile, and the wrinkle on his nose right. This actually really felt like icing art because I was sculpting like a sculpture. I'm a sculptor. Er, er. <laughs> First I was just adding clumps of buttercream but then I had to refine all the lines so that they looked exactly like the smile lines and the eyes of Pumbaa. I was like an artist a little bit. Now I just shaped everything with my offset spatula and then I placed it back into the fridge, took it out, put on my glove, and then started to smoothen out all of those features again with water. He's looking like it now, huh? He's looking a little Pumbaa-ish. You know, at this point, I was kind of just referring to my toy constantly to make sure that I was getting all of his features right. I'm very curious about how Mari Wings looks because she's talking a lot of smack. <laughs> talking about how she's got so much game. What are you thinking about Michael Jordan? Is that right? Is that the right basketball reference? <laughs> Magic Johnson? Is that right? That's also right. It's Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, right? I shouldn't talk about things I don't know about. <laughs> now once I was happy with my buttercream, I added some darker brown fondant to get his belly. And then I used some brown fondant to create all four of his feet. Now these pieces of fondant aren't the same color as my buttercream. So I'm going to take a paintbrush and just blend in some buttercream to make it look like one cohesive piece. You see? So they don't know it's fondant, it just looks like buttercream. Now to create his hair, I'm using a very large piece of black fondant. And then I just use some fondant tools to get the texture right. I applied some skin tone fondant to the front to get his nose. And it actually got dirty so I replaced it when I was taking pictures of the cake. I created his ears using fondant as well, it's the same color as his legs and also some skin tone fondant to create the inside of the ear. He needed like a pedicure too so I'm attaching some black fondant to create his hooves. He's a pretty flat guy, he's got his nails done, he got his hair did, he's going to the club, gonna have some fun. Now all of my fondant pieces are a different shade of brown than the buttercream. 
So I took a paintbrush and I just applied a very thin layer of buttercream to his legs and his ears. So that way they'll just look like part of the buttercream cake. You won't actually even be able to tell that they're fondant pieces. It's a lie. I'm a liar. I got it. Thank you. Thank you in the comments, I get it. <laughs> now after I applied his tail, I gave it the exact same buttercream wash. Then I emphasized his smile a little bit more with some fondant and placed in two tusks using some toothpicks. Ooh, they're looking good, right? They're looking so good. Next, I placed in Pumbaa's eyes. And these were actually too big, so I replaced them when I was taking pictures too. And voila! my pumba cake i think i did an okay job i mean it looks like pumba his legs could be a little thinner i think i could have chosen like a happier sort of smiling pumba and also his tusks aren't even one's higher than the other <laughs> i didn't notice any of this stuff until i started editing the video there are a lot of things that i just want to nitpick but this was a great learning experience now I'm curious, who do you think did better? Team Nino Prodigio or Team Marewink? Now I do have to give a shout out to Marewink and the Bay King. I love these two. They were so helpful. Well, the Bay King was very helpful. <laughs> he creates awesome cakes, you guys. So make sure you subscribe. One of my favorite movies is The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. And one of my favorite quotes from that movie is, the only real failure is a failure to try. And that's why Mari Wink, even though some of her creations she considers fails, I consider them all wins because she didn't let anything stop her from creating it. And it's funny to admit this, but I don't watch the video all the way through because I don't understand it, but I always like it. <laughs> so make sure you head over to their channels Hit the subscribe button, spam them with love, spam Mari Wink with Nino Prodigio. Does it best. Do that. <laughs> Do it. Now make sure you hit that notification button so you can see everything I'm currently working on in the community tab. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram so you can see the insane amount of love that Mario Wing's followers have been giving all of my pictures. You can also see all the trash she's been talking in her story. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you. I will see you very soon. Peace!